Hey everyone, welcome back to part 4 of our 4 part tutorial series on creating your own stylized anime type character in Cartoon Animator. In part 3 we learned about how to set up your character's eyes with additional elements and how to use the expression template system to set up how they'll perform in various animation scenarios. In this video, we will focus on creating a 360 degree head for simulation of 3D movement in a 2D environment and some additional info about setting up the mouth. To start, go into the 360 head creator in composer mode. The layer manager will populate with all of the layers for your head, including additional bones such as the front hair and big ears. If we go into the deform tab, you'll see a basic deformation grid appear, which we'll look at later. If we hit preview now, you can see the rotation results definitely need some tweaking. So let's start with the quick head turn setup button in the top left, which gives us four main angle presets. They are way too strong in this case, but if I bring down the maximum angle value for each, we can get a more presentable result to start from. Again, every character will present its own challenges based on its unique makeup. Hit apply for now to confirm the rotation range and then let's move on to shape adjustment for the mouth. Here is where we're going to use the deform mesh to adjust our mouth sprites to become neutral. Make sure you have the middle rotation point selected and adjust the relevant mouth sprites to create a neutral closed mouth expression. However, if we preview, you'll notice her mouth opens as we rotate the head around. Now, instead of manually adjusting these sprites at each angle point, we can use the copy paste function. In the copy paste options, ensure that deform and layer are both selected. You can copy the entire face, but in this case we only need the four mouth layers, so I'll select those from the layer manager and then click apply to all, which will paste the deformation changes we made to all of the other angle points on the face. Okay, our facial features are looking good, but it still seems like the mouth is floating on the face. To fix this, we can deform the face mesh itself. Since I only want to deform the face background, I'll again use the isolate feature to focus on it, then I can proceed to adjust the mesh for the perspective we want, starting from the left angle point, which we currently have selected. The easiest way to do this is to bring the chin slightly to the left. Then we can preview and make the necessary adjustments to get a better result. Next, we can do the up and down face mesh adjustments following the same procedure. For the bottom angle point, we want to extend the chin area slightly to make it pointier, and for the top angle point, flatten it a bit. This slight tweak adds a nice little touch of perspective. We've got the main four angles set up, but to finish off, we also need to tweak the diagonal angles. The best way to do this is to copy and paste from the respective side angle point. The deformation of the mesh on the side is good, but since our character is looking slightly downwards, we want to extend the chin downward a bit as well. The same thing goes for the upper left angle marker. We want to adjust the mesh ever so slightly upwards. Once we're done that, we can use the mirror function to copy from one side to the other. Alright, now we have our basic 360 perspective simulation all set up. However, there are some things you can do to make the effect even more pronounced. If you look at something like your country on a globe, it will appear smaller and smaller the more you rotate the globe until it finally disappears over the horizon. We don't need to go to that extreme since we're only using 30 degree turns, but we can scale certain meshes down, like the hair elements, as we turn our character's head. So with the right angle point selected, let's scale down the hair section to make it more narrow 
as normally part of it would be occluded from our eyes in a 3D environment at that angle. Conversely, we can widen it while we have the left angle point selected for the opposite result. The outer part of our character's cat ears will also work in this way, showing more as the inner part of the ear turns away from us. The mouth can also be adjusted further by bringing its center more towards the direction of the respective angle marker we have selected. All of these minor adjustments combine together to create a much stronger and pronounced 3D effect for the head rotation. Lastly, we need to finalize the mouth expression templates, which is a very similar process to what we went through in the third video. Open up facial animation setup and switch to smooth mode again to ensure that there is no sprite switching and the expressions are all done through facial feature image deformation. Once again, use the expression template thumbnails as your guide to morph your sprite image to match it. Generally, you only need to make subtle adjustments here. Don't make them too extreme as it may look too exaggerated in the end. For this last expression template, although the thumbnail looks like a slightly compressed mouth shape, you can use more of an O shape for the mouth. Again, use the four different mouth layer images in combination to get the effect you want. When you're done, you can exit back into stage mode for some testing. With the face key editor, you can enter into detail settings to test individual slider values for each facial feature, as well as your head rotation results from the 360 head creation we did earlier. With the Facial Puppet tool, you can use your mouse to rotate the head and test various expression templates. Finally, you can also use Motion Live to control your character using your own facial motion capture. The 5.3 update includes a profile specifically tailored to anime type characters, so you'll want to take advantage of that. That's it for this tutorial guys, thanks so much for watching, and hopefully this helps you on your journey to creating your own unique and vibrant characters. I'll see you in the next one.